members of the Atlanta Council on International Relations, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Earlier this year, when I learned that I was able to visit Atlanta again in March, I was really looking forward to it. So you can imagine my disappointment when the visit had to be canceled due to the pandemic. Although I cannot meet you in person, I'm happy to have this opportunity to meet you online and speak about the important partnership between Taiwan and the United States and recent progress in bilateral relations. Some of you might have already heard about the major announcement our government recently made about U.S. beef and pork imports. We believe that this key step will be an important starting point for closer economic partnership between Taiwan and the U.S. Taiwan plays an important role in the global economy and has incredibly close trade and investment ties with the U.S. The U.S. is Taiwan's second largest trading partner, our second largest export market, and our third largest source of imports. Meanwhile, with a population of just 23 million, we are the U.S. 10th largest trading partner. Our total trade in 2019 stood at 87 billion U.S. dollars, and even these numbers give only a superficial impression of just how intimately linked our economies actually are. Taiwan and U.S. businesses have long worked closely together as trustworthy and reliable partners. For the past three years, Taiwan has organized one of the largest foreign business delegations to the Select USA Investment Summit in Washington, D.C. We also sent biannual agricultural trade goodwill missions to the U.S. to procure several billion dollars worth of America's best agricultural products. Taiwan is the seventh largest export market for U.S. agricultural products, the second largest on a per capita basis. I would also like to especially point out that Georgia pecans contributed a large portion of this. You can find Georgia pecans in almost every local supermarket in Taiwan. From an investment standpoint, more and more Taiwanese companies are investing and creating jobs in the U.S. Most recently, TSMC, the world's leading semiconductor company, announced plans to build a 12 billion U.S. dollar chip plant in Arizona. Taiwan's open, rules-based business environment sets us apart from certain other countries and ties us closely with the U.S. Since surfacing in Wuhan, China, late last year, COVID-19 has spread to all corners of the globe. The disease has brought the global economy to a standstill and changed our daily lives almost forever. However, I'm proud to say that the pandemic is under control in Taiwan. Thanks to our vigilance regarding pandemic in China and the effort our frontline healthcare personnel, today we can say that things are very much business as usual in Taiwan. People are going to work, students are going to school, and public venues remain lively and bustling at weekends. Taiwan's advanced medical and healthcare system is widely admired around the world. But our success in combating COVID-19 has not been limited to scientific or medical achievement alone. In fact, what lies at the heart of Taiwan's successful response to COVID-19 has been the Taiwan model and the open, democratic, and free nature of our society. As Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said, during tough times, real friends stick together. Since April, Taiwan has donated more than 12 million medical masks to the U.S., including 110,000 to the great state of Georgia. Secretary Pompeo's affirmation of the Taiwan model as a paradigm of openness and generosity has only reinforced our determination to remain faithful to the values of our free and open society. In another open acknowledgement of our contributions last month, Secretary of Health and Human Services Alex Azar visited Taiwan. He met with President Tsai Ing-wen, myself, and other senior officials and experts to exchange views on the Taiwan model. We also discussed future cooperation on the development and production of vaccines and drugs. Secretary Azar explicitly said that this pandemic has pushed the United States to recognize the strategic importance of the manufacturing sector 
Taiwan with its strength in the pharmaceutical sector is ready and willing to be a secure and reliable supplier to the U.S., especially in the face of the COVID-19 outbreak. In addressing the economic challenges posed by the pandemic, our government unveiled a number of stimulus measures very early on. These were designed to get our businesses back on track and ensure that the Taiwanese industry can track shifts in global supply chains. At the same time, our government has implemented dynamic economic reforms. We are transforming Taiwan into Asia's high-end manufacturing and R&D hub, a regional financial and wealth management center, and a base for high-quality talent within the Indo-Pacific region. Overall, we have been working to improve Taiwan's regulatory environment across the board. In turn, Taiwan's economy is becoming more resilient and responsive. We have made ourselves an attractive target for any country seeking a fair and equitable trade agreement. Indeed, conditions are now ripe for bilateral trade agreement between Taiwan and the U.S. For years, some U.S. friends have said that one of the major roadblocks impeding the progress of a bilateral trade agreement has been our regulatory barriers on U.S. beef and pork. So in a demonstration of our earnest commitment, on August 28th, our government announced our intention to break these barriers. The reaction from the U.S. side has been overwhelmingly positive. Vice President Mike Pence, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross, Secretary of Agriculture Sonny Perdue, and congressional leaders from both sides of the aisle have all responded approvingly. And as President Tsai has said, our move will be an important starting point for more comprehensive Taiwan-US economic cooperation. We sincerely hope these will open doors and pave the way for substantive talks on closer trade ties, including a BTA. To reiterate, Taiwan's relaxation of restrictions on U.S. beef and pork imports is a significant step. It demonstrates Taiwan's commitment to addressing outstanding issues and moving toward a BTA. It would be significant not only from an economic standpoint, but also strategically, setting an example for like-minded countries throughout the region. Our commitment has been noted, and the U.S. has followed through. Assistant Secretary of State David Stilwell announced at a Heritage Foundation webinar that Taiwan and the U.S. will launch an economic and commercial dialogue led by Keith Craig, the Department of State's Undersecretary for Economic Growth, Energy, and Environment. We look forward to this new high-level dialogue and believe that it will solidify the mutually beneficial economic ties between Taiwan and the U.S. 2020 has been a year of challenges. The U.S.-China trade dispute and the COVID-19 pandemic have changed the global economic order and accelerated the restructuring of global supply chains. It is a great time to strengthen the Taiwan-U.S. economic partnership. As mentioned, talks on the BDA will be an excellent starting point. So we urge all relevant stakeholders to support a closer Taiwan-U.S. trade partnership. And we hope that the U.S., our strongest strategic partner and world's economic leader, recognize the broader strategic implications such an agreement would undoubtedly have. Taiwan's democracy is precious and unique. It needs your continued support. I can assure you, you'll find in us an unwavering partner and a committed friend capable of contributing to the prosperity of both our countries and the Indo-Pacific region. Thank you for your kind attention. I look forward to exchanging views with you all shortly.